aan tafel aangeschoven is Jonathan Marks. Um, officially, um, according to his uh, business card, he's a uh, cross-media journalist visiting here and uh, watching how the students are doing. But you just said, well, you could give me another title as well. Yeah, yeah part of my work is media insultancy. <laughs> So I help companies uh, look at emerging technologies yeah. and see what that's going to mean to storytelling. My background okay. is, is, is broadcasting, mm -hmm. <coughs> but that's very much, an, a, an, in, in Dutch you have omroep, which yeah. mean, basically means to shout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if I shout at you now, most people say, well, please go away. Yeah, what's happening? So yeah. I very much believe in also what, what uh, Gerd was saying this morning, uh, that the future is not shouting, but it's sharing. Mm -hmm. And, and to be able to share material is probably, uh, it's actually the new business model. And in some cases, it's giving that content away in the yeah. hope of uh, building a conversation. Uh, in some cases, it's also, um, uh, you don't make any money on on the content, you make money on things around the content, Yeah. which may be the, uh, the backstage So the, the old model music. for broadcasting was more actually based on the content? I, I think the, the, the um, if I compare what's happening in broadcasting in the Netherlands mm -hmm. in, with other parts of the world, I would say that the commercial sector here in the Netherlands understands exactly where it's going. They understand in interactivity. Mm -hmm. uh, they understand how that the audience has become the product. Yeah. And that There's where, 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 what they have uh, to yeah. do is deliver a, a certain profile to the advertisers them, yeah. to, 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 to make their, their business model work, mm -hmm. which is that uh, it's the they pay that um, yeah. uh, Get was talking about this morning. Um, I don't think the, the public service broadcasters have yet understood that. No. And uh, they are still struggling with the idea that either they have a, a, a you know, the membership uh, idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think anybody's going to pay money for a, a program schedule. No. So, well, I remember Nicolas Nicropont. He said there's more business in accessing the program data than actually the data itself. Uh, right. I, I very much believe in a, an access model. And if somebody say, so what is, uh, let's say, the public service broadcaster in, in, in a country, they, they mm -hmm. are different from the commercial service. Yeah, yeah of course. In yeah. the sense that they've been given the keys to the heritage of the country. Yeah. Right? And it's their job to look, that, look after that. Mm -hmm. So if they if they concentrate on the citizen rather than consumer, mm -hmm. and the consumer to the uh, commercial sector, yeah. then they'll be doing their job. The problem in the Netherlands, speaking yeah. as a foreigner, is at the moment uh, the, the uh, public sector is looking far too much okay. at, at the commercial sector, yeah. uh, trying to copy what they do, yeah. trying to be popular. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a result, um, not making enough effort in making, I would say, high quality content. And as a result, there's a political discussion yep. like, hey, what are you doing copying the commercial stations? Right. And, uh, we and, and it's quite right that politicians and people around outside the, the, the broadcast sector criticize what happens in mm -hmm. broadcasting because yep. it is public money. Yep. I don't think the public service sector in the Netherlands and also in Germany have got a strong enough story yet about why they're doing it. Okay. And that's because they're focused too much on the consumer mm -hmm. and not enough on the interests of the citizens. And th there are cases, for example, take health, yep. where it's in the interests of the tobacco companies that people smoke. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. But in, in the interests of society and certainly the, <laughs> yeah. the health industry, it's not in their interests. Yeah, and so you do have to take sides. Yeah, okay, that's that's an interesting one. Uh, and and how do you think about the the developments, uh, the the upcoming of the social media? Um, well, in the Netherlands we got Hives, of course, but uh, international uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, even uh, YouTube is in a social media environment. I think we're only just beginning to understand how people are using social media. There's this old cliche story about. Uh, you know, uh, SMS was misunderstood in the early days. We didn't realize yeah. how SMS is going to be used. It was simply a technical service for, yeah. for, for engineers. I think it's the same thing with Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, people think, well, a lot of companies think that Facebook is simply a way of broadcasting yeah. their message and, and shouting, basically, instead of on the air, shouting into Facebook. Uh, most people who do that, uh, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if you look at how Facebook is being used in areas where I'm working, like East Africa, Facebook is actually the, the, uh, mm -hmm. it's the new um, uh, job recruitment center. 
so I want to work for you. Don't hire that person. Hire me. I know more people. Yeah. So, uh, and nobody could have predicted that even two years ago. No, absolutely. So, and that will be still in development in the years to come. Uh, yeah. And I think we're also seeing the rise of the smaller cities, too. I mean, I've Okay, that's interesting, because Marion just mentioned here the hyper-local uh, yes, development. Yes, uh, there's been a lot of work uh, mm -hmm. about hyper-local media in Brazil mm -hmm. and in the Czech Republic. And what they've been doing is, is, is uh, trying to find a business model for hyper-local. I would argue that in Brazil they're actually uh, further than in Europe. Mm -hmm. They have television, radio, and local press. The local press knows that the future is not paper. Yeah. Uh, they are getting connectivity. They don't have as good a connectivity as they have mm -hmm. here in the Netherlands, but they do have connectivity. Yeah. Uh, huge interests uh, from especially the, uh, the youth in using uh, smartphones. Mm -hmm. And they discovered that uh, you can build a hyper-local site that makes money, yep. providing your editorial area reaches about 70,000 people. Okay. If you're trying to make it yeah. too small, it doesn't work. No. In other words, you can never pay Critical people. Critical mass, yeah. And, and, and therefore, you can spend your life training people. Uh, but, yeah. of course, they, they have to pay yeah. the bills. Yeah. So they have to go further. Um, so they found the model that works. And uh, it'll be interesting to see whether you can adapt that to mm -hmm. uh, places like the Netherlands, which are okay. highly and, and, and what do you think? How come that, for instance, Brazil is, well, let's say further in development in thoughts than... Well, most Western... Uh, 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 a, because yeah, their economy is growing at an incredible mm -hmm. rate. Yeah. They have a tradition of storytelling. I mean, yeah. telenovelas. Yeah, that's an important one, yeah. Uh, and uh, big media companies doing uh, big productions still. And uh, what was it, 220 million people who live in? <laughs> that's a difference as well. In, yeah. in Brazil, so uh, they, 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 they can try experiments which... Uh, small countries or, or say small language areas have more difficulty doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's interesting. And, and actually, if, if we focus down on your work, by the way, if you want to know more about Jonathan, it's www.jonathanmarks.com. Right. Um, what, what are you doing, actually, like in South Africa? What's your job? What, how do you help them? Uh, some of my work is uh, pure consultancy, but it's also uh, looking at the way people are producing media right now and looking at um, how can they integrate, mm -hmm. not, not just have uh, social media as a sort of physics experiment no, in the corner. No, as in on its own. Yeah, but okay. actually, actually uh, going back to fundamentals by saying, I want to tell, a, I have an idea. Yeah. I want to share that with this group of people. How are we going to do it? What this? mix yeah. of media do I need to do that? Right? Mm -hmm. How do I get the balance yep. right? And um, what, what, uh, how long do I have to keep it? So mm -hmm. Also, the, the life cycle of content, yep. uh, a bit like the, the, the long tail. Uh, work, working out, I want to make a piece of content, how long will it be accessible by the public? Mm -hmm. And in some cases, rebranding companies so that they, they move away from this idea that we, we, ju we just push stuff out and hope that it works yep. and have enormous problems trying to measure it mm -hmm. and switch far more to an access model by saying, uh, we have great ideas, come and share and uh, also remix. There okay. is a brilliant website that if anybody's interested in the content side, no. Uh, it's, I, it's, I think it, it's done by a, a New York um, uh, photographer. Yeah. I, I think it's called uh, Everything is a Remix. Okay. And the two videos that he's made at the moment, they're absolutely brilliant. Partly showing how um, uh, every song, mm -hmm. lots of popular songs ha were in fact a remix from something else. Yeah. And the same thing with film and Hollywood. And in fact, that Hollywood certainly at the moment, is simply busy remixing what they made in the 40s and 50s. Ah, that's interesting. Well, you check it out. Everything is a remix or something like that, but we'll publish the, the exact URL uh, next to this video so you can check it out. Uh, and, and may I say congratulations on this initiative too. Mm -hmm. I'm delighted to see uh, um, the cities in the Netherlands uh, taking this old initiative because the future is a need from, not with me, but with people yeah. Ar uh, yeah. around you who are learning, uh, students who are learning to tell stories in, in new and different ways. And it's so important that they don't get influenced by the old work patterns and that they, they do start from scratch by saying, mm -hmm. I've got this great idea, how can I use uh, a mix uh, of, yeah. of uh, both traditional and, and um, modern media, emerging technologies, let's say. Uh, and I think um, just as we've seen 
major companies like Endemol yeah. build uh, a, a worldwide reputation for building formats. Yep. I think there's a, a huge future for the Netherlands in being the, the, the interactive format capital yeah, of course. the planet. Well, it's interesting. Uh, are you going to give some tips to the students here and wandering around uh, later on? <laughs> Maybe they should invite you as a speaker next year. <laughs> well, I'll suggest it. <laughs> but we got this video anyway, so they can look back uh, as a starter. Well, uh, Jonathan, thank you so much. My pleasure. Good luck with the yeah. Thanks. Good days.